Can y'all see what I'm seeing? Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Something I've been waiting for. I have been looking forward to this so much. Uh, I can't show a whole lot of this because that's going to show addresses and things. This is a little care package that Pat G. Smith has sent to me. Y'all need to check out her her um, channel on YouTube. And she's got things on Facebook, too, that are just awesome. She's got a couple of groups. One of them is uh, just about making tea. She loves to make tea of all kinds and cooks and does so many wonderful things. But um, I sent her some stuff, and she sent me something back. And I can't wait to uh, make a video showing what I've got here. Um, I was sitting out here waiting for that to come in. So, Pat, thank you. I don't know what's in there. A little scared. We're going to see later. Um, but I was sitting out here. I, I caught part of uh, a live a live video that uh, Ann of All Trades was making. And um, uh, got interrupted with that. <laughs> Y'all should check out her channel. But... I'm sitting out here taking a break in the shade of my of, of my plum tree here. Um, it's about the only shade I've got now, and that's okay, because now I've got the sun coming down here for fruit trees to grow and make me lots of food, and they make shade too. But I had an idea uh, of something that's, that's important to me. It's about connections, and anybody that's watched my channel for a while, you know how much connections mean uh to me connections through people and connections through nature okay that's very important to me nature was here first and we're part of her uh, we get a lot we have a lot of rebellious destructive nature uh, about us but we're part of nature no matter where we are even in the big cities because nature's a lot older than us anything that we build up is just gonna go away and it'll be recycled, everything that we do. Um, but one of the, 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 the partnerships, those connections that I love to make is nature and what she does for us. If we just look at it the right way. Now, foraging, whenever, whenever you learn about all the different wild native plants you have in your area, they can do so much for you. Learn what you've got growing out there. And know their names, know what they look like, know how to find them, know what they can do for you. Um, just a quick thing here at, at my feet, my, my, my shorts, <laughs> shorts and boots on here in this hot Alabama day, this springtime. Here in the shade, I see what? I see one of the many types of wild lettuce growing right there. Wonderful medicinal properties. I see some more here. I see um, devil's walking stick coming up right here. I don't want that. It's a friend and it has uses, but the roots go everywhere, just like the staghorn sumac. And uh, they come up and just go crazy. I don't want that. Uh, dandelions. That's something there. I don't know what its name is. There's most things I don't know what they are. But I know that nature has a place for them and a job to do. And some of those things we can use uh, to help ourselves. Now, look here. Look at this plantain. It's a broadleaf plantain. Um, and this is one of my favorite areas. Now, I'm going to show you a little bit. I ain't going to go too far in the back. But right here around my, uh, my aquaponics garden. Um, or aquaponics test area, whatever you want to call it. This is my aquaponics area. Uh, I've got a lot of stuff coming up here. I'm fixing to take care of, but look at all these weeds. Look at all of them. I'm not just, I could, I could do a lot of stuff with them, right? They're weeds. Well, not exactly, right? Broadleaf plantain. That's edible. It also has some quote unquote medicinal properties. You know, I won't go into a whole lot of that, but I encourage you to search that information out for yourself. And and while we're talking about that, you all have heard of psyllium, I'm sure. A natural fiber laxative that you'll learn more about as you get older, I'm sure. <laughs> and I'm at that point, you know, don't have a problem with it, but I do know where it comes from. Psyllium 
comes from the the um, um, the plantain. Most of the time, uh, it's grown on huge farms uh, from the narrow leaf uh, plantain. The the husks and the seeds and ever the seed husk is where psyllium comes from. So whenever you go to the big box store, wherever you get it, and you see psyllium on the shelf, now you'll know where it comes from. And broadleaf plantain will send up a big stalk, and it have lots of seeds on it. I'm going to do some stuff with the plantains around here that I think you're going to like. Um, something else nature loves to do, she's got birds, right? Birds and berries, and those are important to me. Now, I'm, now that I moved the wrong way, but look at here. You know, it's a, it's a blackberry, a black or a brambleberry, some type of some some type of briar that's going to make some type of berry. All right. Now I could just chop it and drop it, let it mulch. I could throw it in the weed tea. But what I'm going to do with an awful lot of these little volunteers that are coming up, I'm going to dig them up wherever they are and put them where I want them. I'm going to let nature help provide me with plants that are good to eat uh, and um, whatever other uses. Now, that's, that's something very important. But I forget who it was that... Uh, that just that just had something on that, but they they were taking the um, uh, uh, blackberries wild. Black no, it was my it was my neighbor. I got inspiration from my neighbor, and she was asking if she could have some of my blackberries, and she's going to pull them up and put them somewhere else. Now you see, there's a connection. We all influence each other. Um, but the blackberries, I'm going to pull those up or dig them up with a big chunk of dirt. And put them as a, uh, a perimeter area plant. And they're going to grow up. And they're going to feed me. And they're going to make a thorny perimeter. Um, and, and that'll help discourage uh, lots of things. Uh, Two-leggers or four-leggers. And I've got many of them coming up. There are so many little blackberries. That will be part of the things that I, that, that I uh, uh, use. Letting nature help me. And then, of course, I've got my dandelions that I let grow and uh, uh, do my best to help make more. Dandelions are food. Um, and you know what? If I get too much of any type of one of my, my, one of my weeds, whether I know them and they're my friends or not, I can use that for compost. It's an amazing resource. You know, compost your enemies, just like David the Good says. The, the, the wise David the good and what you're seeing up there I spoke a little bit about that in, in, the, in the past um, I'm about to start laying down cardboard about to start eradicating the weeds and, and digging up the roots up there so that I can get these grow beds going and spread on up to my little secret garden area and down to what I call my power button which is is kind of a play on words I put logs up there in the form of a, a power button symbol um, which is an ancient symbol of Viking heritage, um, Old Norse heritage, however you want to say it, uh, the power button. Um, but it's a, it, it's a compost pile that I put up there. It's just slow burning. I don't care about it. If it's organic, wood, weeds, whatever, I throw it in there and let it just rot down on its own. Years to come, that'll be an amazing place to get compost from, and I haven't had to turn it or anything. I just let it go. I've got mulberry trees that I'm about to get planted, and I've got a story to tell about, you know, planting trees that I'm going to share with you, and I was, I've was i been inspired by uh, Blooming in Place, another neat little channel just starting up, and her story of her one tree, you should go check out, and it really hit home with me in the past with my mom and a tree, and I'm going to take my blueberries and get them, I mean, my uh, mulberries, and get them planted up. And just got lots of stuff I'm, I'm, I'm wanting so much on the table, so much on the table I'm about to bring out. Um, this, little, this little oak tree right here that keeps coming up, I keep chopping and dropping it, and it keeps sprouting back. And it's got a buddy. I'll probably pull that one on up. But uh, I just wanted to, with this video... Just wanted to encourage you with your connections to other people 
um, make them, help each other out. And your connections, especially to nature, um, they're not just weeds. Indigenous peoples of all across the world knew what all those plants were. And that's where we come from. These ancient warriors and survivors, we are all of their lineage, no matter where we are in the world. They had sacred knowledge of all of these plants gained from, uh, uh, I don't know how many years, but it was a long time trying to figure out what they could eat and passing that knowledge on down to their kids. That's where we get into foraging for the wild things and an appreciation for what nature has at our feet. Uh, if we do ourselves a favor and get off the concrete and pavement and carpet that we're on a lot of times and find out this information. So I would encourage each of you today, you know, to look for the wild things and knowledge of these things. You'd be surprised how much is edible and good for you and how healthy it is. As long as you don't have a poisoned area that you're, that you're foraging from, your wild things can feed you just like they did your ancestors. So, uh, I guess that's what I would encourage y'all to do today. Um, anybody that's watching and I humbly appreciate and, and, and give so much thanks to all of you that's watching my videos. I truly appreciate it and look forward to bringing you more. And, um, I just can't say enough of that. So it means a lot to me. And so here's another shout out to you folks, my subscribers. And um, I appreciate each and every one of you. So y'all have a great day. This may be two videos today. I think it will be. And um, I'll see you on the next one. Y'all have a great day.